Hey, I want to take some time today to do a little update for the people that are curious about what's been going on with the anti-gun legislation we've been fighting here in Washington. And once again, I want to stress that it's important to pay attention to what's going on here in Washington because like I've warned you before, what happens here next goes to Arizona, Texas, Virginia, and so on. And I think I've been proven right about that in recent uh, events. But wanted to tell people what's been going on with the bills we've been fighting lately. You know, the things like we've been facing things like assault weapons ban, uh, standard capacity magazine bans, you know, and so on. And uh, the good news was the bills that we were currently fighting failed to make it out of the House. They had to make it out of the House by a certain date to be heard by the Senate or else they were dead and would have to be reintroduced next session. Well, the Senate chose not to take them up because, you know, right now they're worried. They're worried that Ginsburg's going to croak this year and they're going to get another conservative judge on the uh, Supreme Court. And anything that's in the pipe to get to the Supreme Court, it'll be too late to stop it at that time. And they'll get a definitive judgment that'll set back the anti-gun movement for a generation. So they're waiting to see who wins the election and if see if Ginsburg holds out till next year. Uh, now, if Ginsburg uh, makes it till next year, but Donald Trump wins again, and we still keep control of the Senate, uh, then I think they'll be in trouble. But we'll see how that happens right now. I want to deal with what's going on right now. Because I don't think Ginsburg's going to last another four years. Uh, but here's what we're looking at right now. They did not make it out of the House. The, the standard capacity magazine ban was the one that I was most worried about, and it did not make it out. But here's the thing. We can't really celebrate because these people have a very insidious playbook that Bloomberg has crafted for them and they have endless money to keep doing whatever they want to do. Uh, so what they did with the standard capacity magazine ban is instead of just letting it die, they have now introduced a ghost bill. And if you don't know what a ghost bill is, a ghost bill is a bill where they don't have to actually say what it is in the title of the bill. Usually when you write a bill, the title has to reflect the body of the bill. That's, that's the rules. Like if you're passing a magazine ban or a, a semi-automatic weapon ban, it has to say that in the title. Well, when you pass a ghost bill, there's special, uh, I guess, exemptions where they don't have to actually say what it is in the title. They get to add that later. Uh, I don't know why ghost bills should exist. They shouldn't exist as far as I'm concerned. It's just a way to sneak things through. And why that's important that the title doesn't have to represent what it says is because like if you're someone who pays attention to what bills are coming up, you're like, oh, they want to make a raise property taxes in that bill. Not going to vote for that. Oh, this bill bans standard capacity magazines. Not going to vote for that. But with these ghost bills, the title can be something, let's like say they want to ban semi-automatic weapons. Because they'll say something like, well, we want to ban semi-automatic weapons, and we think the worst issue with them is that they're used for school shootings, so we'll just write a ghost bill where we'll just use a vague title of, like, school safety bill. And then we'll add the, the actual title later, like banning semi-automatic rifles, after it's already gotten enough steam in the uh, legislature to pass. So that's why ghost bills are insidious. So what they did with this new bill, they basically took the uh, standard capacity magazine ban verbatim reintroduced it as a gun bill, but this time, or excuse me, as a ghost bill, instead of calling it this time, you know, uh, banning what they called high capacity magazines, which is like what they had to call the last bill, they called this one like firearms uh, safety programs or something like that, you know, just something to do with firearm safety uh, because they don't have to actually say what's in the body of the text because it's a ghost bill. So uh, they're trying to get this pushed through now with this misleading title. Uh, and all they did was to get this to where it could last longer, because you might be saying to yourself, well, still, they're not going to make the deadline to get stuff through for the session. Well, if something affects the budget, then it's got a longer deadline. It doesn't, it doesn't cut off uh, in February like it does if it's just a regular bill. And so what they did is they tacked a buyback at the very bottom of it. They copied it verbatim and tacked the little buyback at the bottom. And here's how badly they did the buyback. They don't even say anything about how it's going to be done. They basically say the police will have to come up with some way to do it. The police will have to come up with this. The police will have to come up with that. So they didn't even do their jobs. Uh, they threw their jobs off onto the police departments to, on the, their already strained budgets uh, and their already uh, overworked manpower, you know, forces, which I really don't know if I think they're overworked or not. But uh, let's just say they didn't do their jobs. They passed it on to someone else. They just were worried about keeping their billionaire donors happy is what they were worried about. So they last minute slapped us on there. And because it has this buyback on it, well, that would affect the budget. 
if tax money is going to have to go to buy back people's standard capacity magazines, well, then that affects the budget. Therefore, the bill doesn't have to follow the regular rules. It is something that they can wait and vote on later. It stays alive longer. So that's what they're doing right now. They're trying to use ghost bills to keep the bills that died alive. Now, do I think this bill is going to be successful? I do not. As long as we uh, mobilize like we have been and we let people know what's going on. And the name of the new bill is House Bill 2947 here in Washington. House Bill 2947. Uh, I would suggest you go over to like northwestfirearms.com, go to the legal section. There's stuff where you can comment in there and you can get the information to uh, email the representatives in uh, Washington, or excuse me, Washington, our actual Washington state capital about this bill. Uh, and in fact, in the description of this video, I will put an email list where you can just email all the Democrats up there if you want to, if you personally want to send them a letter saying, I oppose a house bill 2947 and if you support it i will actively work to make sure you are never elected again just say something very simple like that because all they're going to do is count like okay today we got 50 emails in support and 150 emails against it's all they do is just count the numbers i mean pay attention to what they say so if you want to do that like i said i'll put that in the uh description below but like i say we did win in, in, I guess, in a way, because those bills didn't make it out of the House. The Senate knew better than to take them up right now because they're afraid of the war. Unfortunately, the people in the House, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, senators tend to be, you know, a little higher echelon people. They're the representatives of the big corporations that pay their uh, expenses. Uh, well, whereas the House tends to be a bunch of morons, usually. It's a good old boy network. It's like, hey, Billy Bob was a mechanic for 30 years here. And now uh, the biggest company in town decided they'd want him to be their mouthpiece in the house <clears throat> because he's dumb enough to do what he's told. So the house is not the brightest bunch of people in the world. Same thing with the, the, the federal <laughs> when you compare house and senate too the iq level drops substantially from the senate to the house uh and but and that's not saying much because in the senate it ain't high <laughs> you know it's basically monkeys that will dance on a string you know for the right people with the right amount of money but i'm getting off into my own opinions of politics here instead of dealing with the topic like i say we did sort of win but they ain't giving up and they will keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it as long as big money, namely Bloomberg and some other billionaires locally, keep pushing them to do it. Because that's what they care about is the money. Now, I'm not talking their money from their salaries. I'm talking the money that goes into their campaign funds, etc. The stuff that pays for their houses, their cars, etc. Not just their campaign. But that's the money they care about. And as long as they keep getting that, they'll keep pushing these bills. So pay attention. Everyone rally against House Bill 2947 because if for some reason it passed here if it makes it through here it's going to come everywhere else also even the places that haven't already been facing it places like virginia etc they tried that stuff here first and then it went there this is their test ground anything that passes here will pass where you're at so just don't think oh i live in ohio that's a safe state it's not right now bloomberg's paying uh, republicans in florida to propose anti-gun bills so even the Republicans will take his money. So don't think your state's immune to it. So like I said, we had a little bit of a victory, but we're not fighting an enemy that fights fair. So we have to keep fighting. So make sure to stand up and oppose Washington State House Bill 2947.